What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So once again, we are in the car. I feel like a lot of videos are gonna end up starting out like this because we're in this car pretty frequently. Um, but currently we're on our way back out to my sister's house because me, Logan, and Bree are going to pick up a new frame today, right here. Um, now, I don't know the brand, I've never heard of the brand before. All I know is that it, it's a like 250 dirt bike frame, um, but it should work out perfectly for us to we swap everything off of Cletus onto it so that we will have a big enough bike for two people to ride on again so that Kara can come riding with me because currently her go-kart is uh, MIA. But yeah, so that's today's plan is to go pick up this frame and hopefully get some of the work done. Uh, as long as we can get the, the bars, the motor, and the gas tank switched over, um, uh, we can ride it as is with all of the parts off of the mini bike. Uh, but I do have some parts saved on my Amazon list that I want to get like a bigger gas tank and a better seat um, just to make it look a little nicer and uh, to give it more of that dirt bike feel uh, plus having that extra couple gallons of gas will definitely work out in our favor a lot more often because as proven by our previous rides, we are never prepared for the um, amount of time we're actually out on the road. So having extra gas never hurts. Um, so yeah, we're about 25-ish minutes out. And uh, I will cut back in when I either meet up with everyone or find something cool to record. So yeah. All right guys, so now we are in the danger buggy with Bree and Logan. Uh, we got the seats folded down for the frame. Uh, the seller's getting a little impatient with me, uh, which we're not very happy with, but we are on our way. We are uh, hauling ass through Mexico, um, and we're going to uh, pick up this frame and hopefully, hopefully get something done today if not first thing in the morning i'll be working on it and as soon as logan's done with school he'll be down there wrenching on it with me too i'm sure so uh well you guys are gonna get gonna get to meet cleo uh cletus 2.0 she's gonna be a beast um we're gonna have to run the old clutch for a couple days uh until i can get a new one ordered same thing with the old gas tank uh and we're gonna have to run a different seat but other than that uh everything else should be fine and I will have all those new parts within the next two weeks, most likely. So we're about an hour or so out right now. I'll update you guys when we get a little bit closer and get more info on what's going on. And uh, yeah, hopefully all goes well and we uh, get to meet Cleo today. Right, guys i gotta do this quick so i don't have to flash on in the car too long but we have got cleo she is secured and we are headed on back home she looks nice and i can't wait to have her ripping soon all right guys so it's another day um i literally just recorded an entire 15 minutes of me just talking about stuff that i didn't want to talk about yet um just having to do with the bikes so i'm, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick rundown show you guys the frame uh tell you what our original plan was tell you how our plan changed and uh, what we're doing now. And then the rest of this video will just be me um, checking a couple things out, explaining a couple things, um, putting a couple little accessories on here like pegs and et cetera, et cetera. So instead of me talking for half the video, uh, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> we got this frame. This is Cleo. Everybody say hi. Hello, Cleo. Uh, I don't know why I chose Cleo. It's just something about her 
you know, she just gave me her name. Uh, and then Cletus, she's a little in pieces right now. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, girl. But, uh, okay, so our original plan, we were going to buy this, flip the back wheel, mount the motor into there, use the gas tank and the seat for the time being until I get new ones, put it on here, make a running bike for the time being, and then once I get the freshy parts uh, and all the pretty stuff, I'd slap it on top of here, and then all of Cletus' stuff would go back on Cletus, except the motor, um, and then we would be rebuilding one of these motors. Logan wants to build the smaller one, but I think I need to convince him to do the 212 instead of the 196. Um, but we're going to rebuild one of those and put it, that on there. And then Cletus is going to become Logan's. And then Cletus is going to become Cleo. Cleo will be mine. Um, but the problem we had is that we can't flip this back wheel because the axle's stuck right now and we don't have the tools to get it off. Um, so we have to wait until we can borrow the tools to get that off. Anyway, um, neither of the frakes work. So we just decided to order completely new whole whole new rims. Um, the frame came with a pair of uh, a set of nice dirt bike handlebars, which we are going to be putting on the mini bike, uh, and I'm going to be keeping my CRF 450 pro ta or CRF 50 pro taper bars. Um, they fit perfectly. I really like the ride height for me. Uh, it makes it it just makes it feel a little bigger, um, a little more comfy. Whole new wheels means we need whole new brake lines. Whole new brake lines means we need whole new brake levers because um, those are plural and I only have one. We're going to have a double hand brake stent set up. Um, no foot brake. I might put one on eventually if I convert this to disc brakes instead of drum brakes. But if I keep the drum brakes, I'm not putting a foot brake. Sue me. I don't care. Um, we're going to do a dual hand brake setup on the left. Uh, we're going to try to keep the right side fairly clear. As you guys know, I've been wanting to engine swap Cletus even after I got the Ghost, um, after I swapped it with the racing motor instead of the stock. Uh, I've been wanting to swap it with either like a 110 or a 125 dirt bike, four stroke, or like, I don't know, like a small Chinese quad engine or something like that. Um, we're still going to keep that same mindset um, with Clio. Uh, eventually I would like to put a bigger motor in it, maybe with an electric start or something like that. I don't know if I'm going to stick with the Predator line or if I'm going to go more actual dirt bike, maybe with a, uh, CRF 110 motor or SSR 110 or something like that. I think 110 would fit this bike pretty nice. It's a very small frame. So well, I'm going to focus on getting the motor taken out of Cletus and making sure it fits properly inside Clio. Okay guys, I took a pretty long break. I'm procrastinating a little bit because I, I can't really do a whole lot today. We have the motor out of Cletus. You guys can see Cletus without a motor again. It's been a, it's been a while. So I just tried to test fit the motor um, for the first time and it's almost perfect. Uh, so far, the only thing I'm running into is this uh, shield plate that I bent out of the way because I didn't know it was there until after we installed it on Cletus. Um, so I obviously did not uh, want to have to completely take apart my bike uh, just to take that off. And I just needed a little bit of extra room. So we snipped part of it and pushed it aside. Uh, but yeah, so far that plate's giving us a problem. And I'm hoping that it will be able to reach without us having to cut off these brackets. Because, okay, so by what I mean, reach. What I mean by reach. Um, so right now, this is hitting this. And not causing, and causing the motor to not sit flush against the bottom of the frame. I'm hoping that once I take that plate off, the engine will just sit right down in there. Knowing my luck, it probably won't. But the problem is, is that if the head does not clear this as well, because it's right above that piece, and that piece goes up pretty high, 
you know, when you push it in there. Um, so if it doesn't clear the head, we're gonna have to cut this. So basically, we're just gonna take off that plate, see if we can't get the motor to fit. See if we could do that, if we can do that, uh, get that put in. I'm gonna see about getting the uh, rest of the pegs mounted up. Uh, and then my seat should actually be in on Tuesday, which is two days from when I'm recording this clip. I apologize that I'm recording this on Snapchat, um, but it looks like in order for me to get this plate off, we're going to have to take off the uh, side cover for the pull star and the flywheel, um, which I have only taken this off once, um, so I'm hoping it looks the same and uh, we don't find any underlying issues. <laughs> That's uh, that's what we're working on now is trying to get this off. I have all the bolts broke loose. Just spinning them out by hand now and then uh, we'll get this side cover off and see if we can't get that plate out and get this motor in. So it turns out to, uh, to get this off, literally all I had to do was take out this bottom bolt here. Um, but since I have this entire side cover basically off, um, as you can tell, my pull start is not in the best condition, so I'm going to be replacing it with my old one, um, which I'm going to take the sticker of, off of. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be switching to the black pull start. Um, it's kind of nice. It'll look a little. It'll look better that way, I guess. I wanted to switch over the case at least. I was going to keep the pull cord because I like I like this little handle better than I like this big rubber one. But I don't know. It'll do for now. They both work, but uh, I don't want that one to break on me again. So another thing that I just thought about before I... I have this completely unbolted, as you can see. And I had to unbolt the uh, ground wire to the kill switch, that wire right there. I had to unbolt it from right there so that I could take this off. And it just came to my mind that I had my old kill switch off of Cletus that goes on my handlebars. Now, every single one of us have been complaining about having a kill switch on the engine, especially in a emergency situation. If we need to shut this bike off, it is too hard to get to this one. Um, but, uh, after watching a quick little tutorial uh, at, on Redbreed's Garage, if you guys uh, want to see the video that I'm talking about, uh, I will put a link in the description below. He showed me how to simply that I can just take as you can see this is the uh, this is the end of the old kill switch that's the ground that's like the main power wire okay on your 212s set it back up there you have all this shenanigans okay your ground wire is usually up here or over here um, and then your other power wires down here. Sometimes, like right here, I uh, I don't have one, but I have a bracket for it. Uh, sometimes you have an oil sensor. Um, you can take that out or you can not. I, my motor didn't come with one because I bought it brand new. And it's a go-kart racing motor, so they took the oil sensor out of the two 12 racing motors. Um, but simply, all I have to do is take this end, take the end off of the old one, plug it into there, uh, I can't do it one-handed um, and then you take this ground and you put it you bolt it down with another ground or somewhere else that works as ground and right then and there you just hooked up two kill switches the only problem is is that if you hook it up like that uh, you have to make sure this one is on at the same time that this one is on or else it won't shut off or it won't start so you have to make sure both kill switches are on in order to start the bike you can you can still use this one to shut it off, you know, on off, but if this one is shut off, this one won't work. So, if you keep this, you have to keep it on. But since I'm over here, since I'm fucking with the flywheel or the pull start and the side cover, I figured, hey, fuck it, why not? Let's put a kill switch on the handlebars just as a extra precaution. Um, that way, plus I don't have to reach down. Um, reaching my hand down by all the moving parts trying to reach for a kill switch so so that'll be the next thing that I do after I get this pull start switched over um, so we will have 
basically an anti-theft device. Cause, so, I think that's a pretty good idea. I think that's what I'm going to do. And uh, yeah, we'll just get it done and get it over with. Uh, we're losing daylight, so it's getting cold. Uh, I'm just going to get this done. And that Currently, as it stands, um, we just got the uh, rear brake lever situation off. Um, we got the plastic piece off slash fiberglass not really sure um that was right here just tape here for some reason um yeah we're basically just stripping this down getting all the stuff that we don't want on it off of it um putting whatever we do want on it on it uh so like i was talking about yesterday we're probably gonna have to cut off this bracket here um, that is the, what we're going to try to do and hopefully that works out properly for us. Um, the nice thing is that the, uh, the sides are no different from one side of the swing arm to the other other than the uh, height of this right there. That's a little taller than that side is. Um, but that could also just be because of how it's sitting. Not 100% sure. Um, also, these forks are adjustable. Um, so when we get the new wheels, we can decide if we need to raise up the rear shocks or not. And then, other than that, yeah, we're basically, basically done with everything that we can do with this other than putting the motor in. And then we're going to be working on that motherfucker again. So, uh, we just had to use this big ass pipe wrench from like the 1900s to get that back axle nut off. Logan's here. Um, just thank fucking God that we got that off because we might be able to get everything bolted in and lined up. The only problem we have is that we don't have anywhere to plug in the angle grinder to cut that off. So, once we figure that out, we'll, uh, we'll be set. <laughs>